The evolution of Russell Brand is something to behold. After a difficult childhood, he suffered from addiction at a young age before taking to showbiz. I can't read. I should have gone to school. I mean, I'm beginning to see now the advantages. Starting out with TV roles, his quick wish, astounding vocabulary and fantastic hair saw him rise to become one of the top stand-ups in the world. Without fame, this haircut just looks like mental illness. His next step was Planet Hollywood, playing a rock star in Forgetting Sarah Marshall, a rock star in Get Him to the Greek and a rock star in Rock of Ages. In 2009, he found love with pop star Katy Perry, with the pair sharing the ultimate Hollywood wedding and then the ultimate Hollywood divorce. Brand could be entitled to half of Perry's estimated $45 million worth. But Russell's latest career shift might just be his most fascinating yet. He's taking on politics, or a sort of anti-politics anyway, with demonstrations, rallies and his own online news channel. Russell is spruiking his very own brand of revolution and is here to recruit you. Would you please welcome Russell Brand! Now, your online news show is called The Truth because you believe that we don't need commercial news services, we just need the truth. You're not going to put us out of a job, are you? No, I want more Australians working, more Australians in full-time employment, not only working in news, but also in the necessary execution of movie stars' pets. Me and my dogs <laughs> are going to come there unaccounted for. I'm sneaking all sorts of canines, fruits and crops into your country. None of it's going to be registered. I've got a banana in me right now. <laughs> Good. It's good to hear. Um, your cat's Morrissey, I understand. When you come to Australia, will Morrissey be making the trip with you? He's already there in advance, breeding with Australian cats, <laughs> freely, without protection, <laughs> cross-breeding with them. What's the name of your sort of agriculture minister? It's about... Jacoby about... Pippins. <laughs> Jacob... I'm Jacoby Pippins. I don't, I don't care about this uh, Johnny Christopher Depp, whatever his name is. Doesn't matter if you're Captain Jack Sparrow, the rules are the same for everybody. <laughs> he sounded like Johnny Depp had broke his heart. It's <laughs> <laughs> so personal. Our Prime Minister Tony Abbott and our foreign uh, Minister Jacoby Pippin have been <laughs> handing out uh, knighthoods like they're going out of fashion. Do you expect a knighthood when you arrive here? Are you worthy of an Australian knighthood? Yes, I'd like to make my pitch right now. I want to be a knight of Australia. I want to be in Canberra or wherever your capital <laughs> city is called, made an honourable member of the Australian elite, which for me as an Englishman is a considerable climb down. <laughs> <laughs> Have you thought about how you're going to arrive here? Because, you know, our border protection is pretty strict. I'm going to arrive here wearing Johnny Depp's dead dogs as slippers. <laughs> <laughs> to Jacoby Pippin, I'm going to say, I've killed these dogs in your honour, Jacoby. Now, where's my knighthood? <laughs> Uh, I, I have a favourite politician here, uh, Russell. His name is Christopher Pine. Uh, we pronounce it Christopher Pine. I want to show you a clip of him and I want to get your thoughts. Let's take a look at this. This is a joke. You can't tell the word like this. It's a rabbit. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't, don't encourage them. Beef, well, we have a bit of beef. Don't encourage them. Oh, they, but this is, this is not the wild duck moment. Don't encourage them. This is not really. They're shocking. This is not the wild duck. Don't feed the chooks. Did you reach agreement on anything tonight? They have the best yeah, dumplings did. in Canberra. <laughs> <laughs> Playing on so much. Other than the dumplings. No, you and you've <laughs> lost too much weight. What about the budget? <laughs> talk about the budget. They have the best dumplings in Canberra. We were talking about the 2015 budget. We're not talking to a man dressed in shorts and a T-shirt. Good night, Clive. Thank you. Thank you. God See you, <laughs> I've cleared that hurdle away, that impediment to voting for the bill, by funding it in another way. Now, now Labor... How have you been able to do that? will be clear in the budget, and I've dealt with it. <laughs> that you have to get the reform bill through, I've, otherwise the 1,700 it. positions would go. I'm a fixer. How did you fix it? I fixed it by funding it in another way, which you'll find out in the budget. Why can't you tell us? I want it to be a surprise for you. <laughs> <laughs> Russell, have you seen a politician that resembles more a Bond villain in your life? <laughs> no, he's really up there. I imagine <laughs> below frame he was stroking a white pussy that had been brought <laughs> legally into the country. <laughs> 
Russell, another. I've got a surprise for you. Don't need to know my policies. You'll know my policies when they happen. I've got a little surprise. I've got my nipple pierced. I'm tweaking it right now. <laughs> So we have to go to a break. Do you mind sticking around for a bit longer? I tacitly endorse these products. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back after this. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome back to the program. We're speaking with Russell Brand. Pete. Russell, we have spoken all things uh, politics and many issues. We want to get a little bit personal now. We want to first of all say happy birthday for tomorrow. You're turning 40. That's happening now. <laughs> I, I turn 40 in a couple of weeks myself. How are you feeling about it? I'm trying to detach myself from the subject through meditation and uh, sleeping with increasingly young people <laughs> till, uh, eventually I'll be like most British politicians just hovering around play schools. <laughs> Russell, you're increasingly sober, uh, totally sober, no drugs, no alcohol. Uh, how do you get loose these days? I mean, you know, it's not easy, really. I think the, 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 the tragic truth is there is no true happiness without spiritual connection. I've tried to make myself happy through hedonism, decadence, Johnny Depp dog slippers, <laughs> rudeness, sex. It seems that really all forms of pleasure are fleeting and temporary, and until I as an individual connect with happiness through service, I will have no lasting happiness at all. And that really pisses me off. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm fascinated. Were you like this when you shot movies? Like, during breaks on Arthur, did you check the Helen Mirren like this? Did you have these kind of conversations? Whenever there were breaks in filming on Arthur, I devoted myself entirely to my personal project, which was trying to have sex with Helen Mirren. <laughs> there was no time for talking about the nature of consciousness and is everything one. I was trying to explore deeper mysteries. <laughs> Russell, you've been really honest talking about your battle with your drug addiction. You're now clean, which is great. Um, in Australia, our biggest problem here is ice. It's terrible. We've never seen anything like it before. Our former head of Victoria Police has come out saying that it's not a policing issue, it's an issue for society. Would you agree with that? Hmm. Yeah, as a matter of fact, I do agree with that. I, I think you have to look at what is the reason that people are taking drugs. Now, human beings have always been interested in experimenting with levels of consciousness, but when you have mental health epidemics and drug abuse epidemics, you have to think about what social conditions are causing people to be so uneasy in reality. The reason I took drugs when I was growing up is because I couldn't cope with the feelings I had of loneliness, isolation and pain. And I imagine that anyone that's using drugs addictively, particularly sort of uh, dangerous and unpleasant drugs like crystal meth, are doing it because of psychological problems. In countries like Portugal and Switzerland, they're experimenting with decriminalisation and proper, sensible, healthy regulation of even Class A drugs. We're seeing a drop in the crime rates and we're seeing a drop in HIV and a drop in abusive drug use. So we have to have a progressive, compassionate and intelligent approach to drug regulation. And that includes, Russell, decriminalising all drugs, do you think? I think if you stigmatise people's mental illness and criminalise people's mental illness, you're starting from a very difficult position. My personal experience is that drug addicts are going to take drugs regardless of administrative procedure. If you're not interested in addressing the causes of the drug problem, the social, psychological, familial problems that lead to drug abuse, then, then you will not solve the problem. Russell, we could listen to you and your personal wisdom all day. Is there any chance you could run for PM? Oh, no, really. I mean, it's, it's difficult to, to say at this stage. Let's just see how this True World Order tour goes. Let's see how me and Jacoby get on. Perhaps spend... I'd like to spend some time with that supervillain guy as well. I'm a fixer. <laughs> Cle Clementine McNasty. <laughs> That's a secret policy. We're going to make an English guy Prime Minister. How do you like that? We're not going to have a Queen anymore. <laughs> Well, tickets for the True World Tour are on sale now. You can find...